there, I'm Ian Cameron. You might remember me from such shows as Let's Make a Solar System, an anti-gravity machine, science fiction or spacecraft propulsion. Welcome to this week's show where even making the most complex things can seem quite simple. Seeing as last week's show Let's Make a Time Machine was so well received in the new format, this week's project will follow the same step-by-step -step guide. With news reports frequently focusing on the latest bad news, you folks at home could certainly use a break from time to time. A comedic magazine article once circulated in the early 1980s, telling readers how to go about building an atomic bomb for themselves, which, given the political climate at the time, didn't seem all that far-fetched. The article's intention was to provide a humorous look at current world affairs, and to remind people to relax and not to take life too seriously because you never get out of it alive anyways. The fact is, one cannot simply walk down to the store and buy everything needed to build a nuclear bomb. Nowadays, with the advent of terrorism and home security on everyone's mind, the simple thought of building a nuclear device for oneself, for the purposes of self-defense and made completely from household items, can seem quite humorous once again in our time. The construction project this week will be a thermonuclear device, which will hopefully clear up any misconceptions you might have about nuclear power. We will see how easy it is to make a device of your very own in 10 easy steps, to have and to hold as you see fit, and without any annoying interference from the government or the courts. The project will cost between $5,000 and $30,000, depending on how fancy you want the final product to be. Since last week's show, Let's Make a Time Machine, was so well received in the new format, this week's show will follow the same format. First, obtain about 50 pounds of weapons-grade plutonium at your local supplier. You won't need all of it, but 50 pounds is plenty for our use. A nuclear power plant is not recommended, as large quantities of missing plutonium tend to make plant engineers unhappy. We suggest that you contact your local terrorist organization, or perhaps the Junior Achievement Club in your neighborhood. Please remember that plutonium, especially pure, refined plutonium, is somewhat dangerous. Wash your hands with soap and warm water for at least 30 seconds after handling the material and try not to allow your children or pets to play in it or eat it. Any leftover plutonium dust works as an excellent insect repellent. You may wish to keep the substance in the lead box if you can find one in your local junkyard, but an old coffee can will do nicely. Fashion together a metal enclosure to house the device. Most common varieties of sheet metal can be bent to disguise this enclosure as, for example, a briefcase, a lunch pail, or a Buick. Do not use tin foil. Here we've used an old computer tower. Arrange the plutonium into two hemispheric shapes separated by about four centimeters. Use rubber cement to hold the plutonium dust together. Now, get about 100 pounds of trinitrotoluene or TNT. Again, you shouldn't need all of it. Gel ignite is much better, but messier to work with. So we'll just use TNT for now. Pack the TNT around the hemisphere arrangement constructed earlier. If you cannot find gel ignite, feel free to use TNT packed in with Play-Doh or any modeling clay. Colored clay is acceptable, but there's no need to get fancy at this point. Enclose the structure from earlier into the enclosure made earlier. Use a strong glue, like crazy glue, to bind the hemisphere arrangement against the enclosure to prevent accidental detonation, which might result from vibration or mishandling. To detonate the device, obtain an RC servo mechanism or radio-controlled servo mechanism found in RC model airplanes and cars. 
With a modicum of effort, a remote plunger can be made that will strike a detonator cap to effect a small explosion. These detonator caps can be found in the electrical supply section of your local supermarket. We recommend the Acme Blastomatic brand because they are a no deposit, no return brand. Now hide the completed device from the neighbors and any children. The garage is not recommended because of high humidity and the extreme range of temperatures experienced there. Nuclear devices have been known to spontaneously detonate in these unstable conditions. The hall closet or under the kitchen sink will be perfectly suitable. Now you are the proud owner of a working thermonuclear device. It's a great icebreaker at parties and in a pinch can be used for national defense. The device basically works on the detonated TNT compresses the plutonium into a critical mass. The critical mass then produces a nuclear chain reaction similar to a domino chain reaction. That reaction then produces a big thermonuclear reaction. And there you have it, a 10 megaton explosion. In next week's show, we'll learn how to clone your neighbor's sexy wife in six easy steps. This weekend promises to be full of fun and excitement, among other things. Common kitchen utensils will be all you need. Until next time, see you later. I'm Ian Kelly.